Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about inheritance. Inheritance is one of the object oriented programming principle. So what is inheritance? So to understand inheritance, let's talk about a uh, real life example, right? Now, all of us have family, right? So whatever, if you, you have your parents, right? So whatever your parents usually earn in terms of property, whether it is, you know, a physical uh, property or whether it's money, right? And let's say you have, you are, uh, you are a kid of your parent, obviously, right? So what is going to happen is that whatever your parents earn, they are going to give it to you, right? In terms of, we say that, you know, you say that you inherit your property, inherit the material property from your parents parents so that that concept right that you the kids or the children are going to inherit you know whether it is money whether it is a you know bungalow or anything right from the parents that concept is called as inheritance in real life similar concept we have in object oriented programming as well in this case inheritance means that that you have a particular class because in object oriented programming everything is about classes and objects so let's say you have a class called as let's say animal right now animal class, right? You, what does animal class mean? It means that it's a blueprint to capture information about a entity which is called as animal. Now animals we know are what all properties an animals can have. What is the name of an animal, right? Like uh, whether it's a tiger or whether it's a lion, right? Then you can also have different breeds, right? Suppose if I take dog as an example, dog can have different breeds, right? It can be either a Pomeranian or it can be, you know, a, a, what to say, your labrador right there's so many different breeds of a particular animal right so an animal can have a lot of different properties and depending upon what the kind of animal it is like whether it is you know a wild animal or it can be a domesticated animal right so we can have different properties it can have different uh, what to say behavior correct so this animal class imagine you can capture all the information for an animal class by saying by defining a class animal in your object oriented programming but specifically i can also might create you know a class which is called as dog and i can also create a class which is called as cat now how does it relate to animal what it means is that dog is also an animal right i can write dog is an animal correct cat is also an animal right so what are these these are like specialized cases of the main uh, concept animal yes animal is a concept so i might actually capture i might create a class animal which will have all general properties or general behavior which an animal can perform right but if i want to have a specialized thing like in an animal yes dog is an animal but there will be certain properties or certain behavior which are very unique to a dog right that is something that is you know unique which separates a dog from a cat so when you have to capture that specific information what you can do is you actually perform you can create different classes for them correct but these two classes dog and cat are going to have some you know common properties right because they are animals so if it's an animal's name it means it's going to have a name correct it's going to have a breed correct every animal might be you know uh, would have some sounds right and animals are going to communicate through sounds right but in the case of a dog uh, the dogs usually bark right but cat is going to you know meow so there are different you know sounds for an animal correct but the common properties can be listed with this class and whatever special or unique properties which you know are you know specific to this particular category like a, cat, a dog or particular cat can be listed where in this particular class so when you have this relation this relation is called as inheritance in more uh, you know what to say bookish term what i can say is it's basically a process where you start with a generalized concept this is a generalized concept which is animal and then you you know try to draw specialization out of this generalization so for example animal is more of a general concept and then you specialize right like dog is like a special kind it's a, it's a kind of an animal correct then cat is another kind of an animal so what you're trying to do is you start from generalization and you move on to specialization so you can think of inheritance as you know something called as top down approach meaning that you start from generalization concept and then you move down to specialization another way of looking at it can be a bottom up approach meaning that this is what this is a cat this is a dog let's say we have two classes dogs and cats right you have some uh you know need of you know uh, what to say 
capture the information of dogs and cats but obviously there can be certain information like the name breed right the sounds they make these are some common properties between the two classes correct so instead of you know mentioning name breed and sound in dog and also mentioning the same three properties in the cat class what we can do is we can take the common properties and move it into another class which can be called as the animal class so here what you are doing is from starting from specialization you are moving up towards what generalization this is called as bottom up approach okay so inheritance can be thought of as top down where you start from generalization and move to specialized classes or it can be thought of you start from the specialized classes and then you do what you have those common behavior or common properties which you want to list down only once and can be done going from the bottom up approach okay so this is the concept of inheritance so whenever you talk about inheritance the best an example to understand this is a real life scenario where you, you like we everybody has a family right we uh, all the kids are going to inherit some kind of property from the from the parents that's actually the case of inheritance all right so when you talk about inheritance let's talk about what are the different ways in which you can create this classes and how you know create saying that you know how can i actually mention like suppose if i have a class animal right and i have a class dog and i have the third uh, class suppose cat now how do i mention that that the dog is a type of animal in other words i want to mention that dog is going to inherit all the properties of animal similarly cat is going to inherit all the properties of animal how can you do that you can do that in java by mentioning or using a keyword called as extends whenever you say extends right this keyword is going to you know give uh, you know it's going to tell your compiler that dog is a class whose parent class or in other words the parent class from i mean the generalized concept for this dog is from the parent class animal so i have to mention your dog extends animal correct similarly you can do for and you will have your class right similar thing you could do for your cat as well you're going to say class cat you're going to say extends animal right so this is how and then you will have your normal declaration of your class right and you can have all the properties here so this is going to tell us that animal okay is the parent class right and dog is a child class because it is going to extend means it is inheriting all the properties of the animal class similarly cat is a child class which is inheriting all the properties of the animal class right so we have a diagram here where animal is the parent and we have two subclasses or two child classes which are dogs and cats right so let's try to uh, you know uh, go to intellij and see ki how we can you know uh, call like if i create an object of this class okay if we create an object of this class can you call all the properties of dog or if you create an object of animal can you create you know call all the properties of cat let's look at some interesting observations so here i have already written the code you can find this code on my github link i will be linking the code down in the description so let's talk about our first parent class which is class you know animal right so here i have the properties so as you must be knowing that whenever you have day whatever data members you have in your class it is a good practice to always make it private because you do not want you know uh, other class to directly manipulate your data it's basically a security thing and you can then because it is private means you have to expose getters and setter methods so that you give access to this you know your data via the methods because due to this what happens is you can even put up you know some kind of validation right and you can also control which uh, i mean who can get access to those particular data right so i have your private string name private string breed so you have just taken for example purpose two properties name and breed because every animal is going to have a name right and it's also going to have a breed to it then i have i have created your getters and setters as you can see get name is the uh you know getter method for my name similarly i'll have a setter method similarly for breed there's a getter and a setter right then i have a constructor here okay so constructor animal in this is a default constructor but i have just written a print ln saying print parent class constructor called i just wanted to you know write down here so that whenever the constructor of the parent class is called i will you know it's basically for me to understand that when is the time when the parent constructor gets called now i also have one more parameterized constructor here which is going to basically you know uh, set the values for the properties 
okay then we have two methods here make noise okay so i'm saying this is just an generic animal noise because it's a parent class and then i have a display message this we can ignore for now but this is what we are looking at right now we have two child classes let's look at the properties there so if it's a dog i have said it is extends animal why right? this line is going to now tell the java compiler that dog is a subclass or a child class of the parent class animal here i have a constructor in dog which is saying that you know instead of here it should be the child class constructor has been called right now moving on i have one more property here which is called as service dog then i have your uh, constructor dog right if you can see here in this constructor i have three properties what is it string name string breed and boolean service dog right whether it's a service dog or no in this class this class dog i only have you know basically mentioned the property which is service dog we can make it even private we can even make this private that is not a concern you can just make this private if you want right so if i'm doing this if i'm doing this how do i get the access of name and breed from where is this name and breed coming and what is this keyword so far let's understand so whenever you say inherit right whenever you are using this keyword extends you're actually performing what inheritance in java inheritance means what it means like in real world when you say you're going to inherit you know your families your parents you know wealth what happens is whatever wealth belongs to them has been transferred to you right that is what the meaning of inheritance in real life means similarly here whatever properties right a class has two things what are those things you base a class has the properties basically the data right and second thing it has behavior which are modeled in terms of methods so whatever properties and methods of the parent class is there is been inherited by the child class correct that means though i am going to mention my properties and method only once in animal the dog class can now access all the properties and all the methods of the parent class animal because i have performed inheritance similar for my class cat right so now coming back here that's why this name and breed is being you know taken from the parent class which is animal because in animal class which is a parent class i have two properties string name and string breed correct so now what i need to do is i want to i'm using a constructor parameterized constructor to set the values for all my properties of the class correct now because class dog is inheriting you know a animal class dog class is going to have three properties what is it the name the breed and the boolean value is service dog correct if that is the case how do i now assign values correct now what i could have done is instead of doing this i could have said this dot name right this dot name equal to name am i able to do this no this is not working why because name is not defined inside the dog class it's not defined inside the dog class but rather it is defined in my parent class right it's defined in my parent class so what am i going to do is can i not call the constructor of my parent class because in my parent class if you look at this we had seen a constructor which has two parameters string name and string breed correct why can't i call though because it's a child class right dog is a child class and because it is inheritance we said child will have access to all the methods and the data members right that that also means to an extension it also will have access to the constructor of the parent class so if you want to call the constructor of the parent class so what is the parent of dog animal so if i have to call the constructor of the parent class you can do so using the keyword super basically you whenever you want to call the constructor or a method or anything of the parent class the word which you use the keyword which you use is super super means it basically means you are calling or accessing a entity of the parent class the direct parent of dog is animal correct so that is why super name comma breed is going to give me the access of i'm going to basically access this constructor okay because super means parent class and what i'm accessing the constructor it has name and breed so now to initialize these members right which are available to dog class because of what inheritance i have to set values i can do so by calling the constructor of my 
parent class right and then obviously this dot service dog belongs to what belongs actually it's a property of the dog class and i can simply assign it or access it using this dot service dog i hope this is clear so whenever you see super keyword super keyword means you are accessing that entity of the parent class here you can see you're actually trying to call a constructor so super here means that you are trying to call the constructor of the parent class right i hope this is clear next is what I'm doing here is now the concept of polymorphism would come into picture. If you can see here void make noise, this method is already defined in what in my parent class. If it is defined in my parent class, what it means is it's obviously available to the child because we say inheritance means everything of the parent, including the constructor can be accessed via the child. So now what I'm doing is might be in the child class, like because it's a dog, right? Dog is not going to make a generic noise. Dog will have its own, you know, own kind of sound, which it's going to make, correct? So in that case, what I want is I want to write my own implementation for a particular method. I have got this method directly from my parent, but instead of using the parent's implementation, which is the implementation of this, I want to use a custom implementation of my, in my child class, you can do so. And that is actually the concept of polymorphism. You can find it more in the polymorphism video. So I've just overridden my make noise and written, given it to the custom, you know, uh, you know what to say, custom implementation, right? If you can, you can also do something like this, you can even call you know your super dot say suppose if i say make noise what this is going to do is here you are calling the version of make noise of your parent class and along with that you also want to add on to that logic so you can there are two ways of doing it not even two the three ways of doing this one is you could have simply used the you know implementation which was given in the parent class as it is second is you could have your own custom implementation Correct, which was this line, just you're just overriding it. Third thing you could have overridden along with that, you could have just add on, like this is going to call whatever implementation was present in the parent class, and along with that, you're adding something new to your uh, into that implementation. So there are different ways of doing it. As you can see, I've used the word super dot make noise. Correct. So if I've done super dot make noise, you're also instead of calling the constructor, what you could have done is you could have also done super dot, let's say it might be you can say because it's a private right right if you look at this these values are private correct if they are private means you cannot call it directly but you can call it through getters and setters and we want to set the values here so if you could say super dot set breed and you could set the given the value this is going to set the value similarly super dot might be you know set name and that's going to set the name so you could have also done like this this is basically calling the methods of the parent class right the only reason i can't directly say super dot breed or super dot name is because the access which is set on breed and name in my parent class is private so if it's private means i it cannot be called in any other class if i have to make it accessible only to the child i could have given what access i should have given it protected access i hope that makes sense right so this is what you can do this is your method overriding concept which is basically polymorphism right Next is what I've done is for the same method, right, I have overloaded this method, right, just trying to use all different concepts of object oriented programming here and just trying to give you a flavor like how powerful this concepts of object oriented programming is. And you this helps you to model the real world into your programming world, right. So here what I've done is this function make noise, I have overloaded this function because I have given a parameter string sound, right. Next, I have some unique functions or unique methods which are specific to the dog class fetch function was not present in animal class so these are some extra properties right why because see obviously makes sense right if it's a parent parent was more of a generalized concept right now dog is a special kind of animal right it's a different animal so it will have its own properties as well so i have some properties like fetching something or sitting so i have just added some properties here yeah now this is one class similarly i will have a class of cat because that is my second child so cat extends animal right so again here i have used the super uh you know what to say constructor to give the values of name and breed here again i have override overridden make noise right i have again overloaded it then i have some unique functions which belong to only the cat class right that's i mean cat can you know simply meow or yeah for a cat can scratch right it's like scratching the furniture so these are the things i have added now these are this is where i have designed my classes so now let's try to create objects and see how this everything works together 
So here I have an inheritance demo, so for a different class where I have created a public static void main. Yes, I have created an object of animal, which is the parent class, right? So parent class animal is object is created and it's also been, you know, um, added back. I mean, you know, it's referred by the reference type also of animal. Now animal can hold what? Make noise. Let's try to run this and see. Animal equal to new animal. Now, when, when you say animal, this is basically which class? It's a parent class, right? So when I say animal dot make noise, which version of make noise would be called actually the version which is present in the animal class and here what we can see is generic animal noise so what i should get is if you look in the output right after this was called what is it parent class constructor was called why because here you have called the default constructor and the default constructor we had given a line saying that parent class constructor is called and what generic animal noise right so this makes sense this is a normal uh, way you would you know actually call create an object and create the uh, call the method right this is fine now how about i create an object of the child class cat right so now i'm saying cat cat equal to new cat given the name to it and persian cat please remember if you go to the cat class I have set the values of name and breed using my parent constructor. That is one thing. Secondly, those two properties are not defined in the cat class, but they are rather being available to cat class from the parent class, which is animal. So now when I say cat dot make noise, right, it's going to say, see, first this line is going to do what? This particular line, cat cat equal to new cat. This cat, this particular thing is going to create the, what is it? It's going to create your cat object, right? After that is done, what is going to happen is I'm going to say cat dot make noise, right? So cat dot make noise is going to call which function, which uh, this of your uh, version of make noise. It's going to call the version of cat because we are going called on, we created an object of cat. So that's the version of cat class version of make noise would be called. Now I'm going to say, I'm going to say cat makes sound per because I gave it the value. When I say cat dot scratch, it is going to say kitty is scratching the furniture. Now, how about, how about, let us create simple like this. Let's do one thing. <clears throat> Let's say cat, you know, let me give your cat to, okay, new cat. Right, a simple, you know, a default constructor. Let's try to run this. Yes, can you see your, can you see your, that this particular line number nine is giving me these two sentences parent child parent class constructor call followed by child class constructor call why is this the case the reason is whenever you create an object okay of the child class first the constructor of the parent class is called and then the constructor of the child class is called and that's why i have given parent class constructor call and child class constructor call the reason here i did not give anything because in this kind of constructor which is a parameterized constructor i had not written the line to print but here i've already written the line for my default constructors and that's why you can see first parent class was called whether you can just make a note of this that even the memory reference type is of the child class even the object is also of child class then also first the parent class constructor would be called and followed by the child class constructor right this is something which i wanted to show you now again we have the simple again dog has been called dog dot make noise i hope you know that you're going to call the dog class version of make noise right so you can see also dog makes sound as bar uh, as bark right if i'm going to fetch then I'm going to say Pluto is fetching the ball because I've already given the name to the dog, right? And you remember this has been done using what? The uh, constructor of the parent class, right? Because we had called super. Now, let's see some interesting things. Here you can see animal, okay? OBJ1 equal to new cat. What is it? So basically this is an object. The object is new cat. It has been, object is of the child class and it has been given what it has been assigned to a reference of the parent class this is the reference i hope everybody understands this is the reference part and this is actually object which has been created here what you have done is you have created an object of the child class and assigned it to the parent class reference when you do so let's see what all things we can do and what all things we cannot do now in the cat class we know that cat class has access to all the properties of the animal class right because it's a child class child class is going to inherit anything everything correct now but when you try to do obj1 dot scratch 
it is not going to give you access. Why? Because scratch method is only written inside the child class. Because the methods which are written only inside the child class, the parent class memory reference will not have access to it. Please remember, if you go to the cat class here, right? In the cat class, we have a method which we have written as scratch, correct? And the scratch method is not present in our animal class. We do not have scratch method in animal class. That means that is why if you do not have that method, I will not be able to call the scratch method using the memory reference of my parent class. Right? You can definitely do this because, see, here you are saying that, see, a cat, the object of a cat is a type of what? Animal only, right? Because it is inheriting animal's properties. So, that is why I can actually assign it to an animal reference. But that doesn't mean I can call the methods which are not present in my parent class. But using this, I can definitely call all the other methods like make noise, right? I can call get breed. All these methods which are available both in parent and the child class. Those uh, properties or those methods I can call using this object. So this is something to remember. Second, let's take another example. Even I've taken animal and created an object and now I'm assigned it to a subclass which is dog. Here also the fetch method belongs only to the dog and that is why it will not allow you to access it. Okay, so what do we learn from this is whenever you create an object of the subclass and you know make it assigned to the parents class reference, you will not be able to access those methods and those properties which are only unique to the child class. Okay, so that is something we should remember. What we just learned is that if you create an object of child class, right, and you reference it using the parent class. What, what this object is allowed to do, this object can access all the properties and method which is common to both parent and child. That is why when you created the object of the child class which is your dog and cat and you made this object reference to using the parent class, you were able to access all the methods except only those methods which were specific to the child class. Like for example, in the dog class, we had a method fetch which only belonged to dog. Similarly, in the cat method, we had a method scratch, which only belonged to the class cat. These methods you couldn't call using now the reference list, right? This is something was the thing. So this is the rule. So if you create the object of the child class, you can definitely refer it using the parent class. But you that object now can only access the properties which are common to both parent and the child. So this is one thing. So let's look at some, some other observation as well. What would be the other observation? What if you create a object of the parent class, right? Why not? If I create an object of the parent class and now try to assign it to the child class, will this be allowed? This directly is not allowed and you will get a compile time error. You will get a compile time error. This is not allowed. But what is allowed is if I had to create an object like this, animal obj, but the object which is created is of the child class. This we saw in the first point, this is allowed. But now what I will do is, now I will create a cat, okay? I'm going to create an object of the cat, right? And now I'm going to assign this OBJ to cat. If I have to do this, I have to explicitly downcast it by saying, this is called as explicitly downcasting. Explicitly downcasting. Now, what does downcasting and why am I using the word downcasting? Because here you are saying, see, this is basically, though this is an object of the child class, but you are referring it using what? The parent class. So, what you are actually trying to do is, now you are saying you want to even access this using what? The child class memory reference. If you want to do that, you have to downcast it to the child class. Why downcast? Because animal is the parent class, right? So, you are downcasting it to your child class. This is why it is, down. this is this is called as explicitly downcasting it. You have to do this and then your compiler will be okay. But if you directly try to do something like this, cat, you know, the name of the cat and you try to, you know, basically if you try to create an object of the parent and try to, you know, refer that object of the parent using directly the child class memory reference that is not allowed it is going to give you compile time error but you can do something called as explicitly downcasting okay this is something you should know we can look at an intellij 
yes if you look here if i had this compile time error cat right and i tried to even if i tried to you know kind of convert it into a type of cat and if i try to do this this is going to give me a compile time error but instead of that i can do downcasting right this obj1 if you see is basically the object is of the child class and is being referenced by the parent class and then i can just explicitly downcast it to cat and now if i i can even access cat one dot scratch right so let's just run this you would see here yes so you are saying null is scratching the furniture the reason being because i have called what i have actually not created this object if you can look at this this object this i have not passed any name right so if i had to pass any name then instead of null it will give me the value right so that's why otherwise this is okay so this is something you could do right this is one thing now third thing which you should know in inheritance and which is mostly the interview question is what if what can you do to prevent a class from getting inherited what am i saying suppose this is a class animal you do not want any other class to actually inherit this class and why would you need that suppose you have some private data okay you have a blueprint or you have some collection of data and you do not just want see when you inherit a class you actually are copying its methods and properties you're getting all the access to all the methods and all the properties but what if you do not want to do it there is only one way right one is you could make everything private but that is extremely restrictive way right private means only that class can access those uh, entities correct so the other method is what another method is you can somehow there has to be a way of you know telling the of enforcing the fact that i do not want my class to be inherited by anyone you can do so by creating that class as final the moment you create this class as final now this class cannot be inherited and we can see this can you see this line it is i am getting a red thing which says that cannot inherit from the final animal similarly i would have the case for dog as well so if you want you do not want your class to be inherited you need to make that class as final so this is something which you should know right then another thing is about so these are the three things right the last thing and interesting thing about inheritance in java specifically is the diamond problem and this is a very famous interview question as well either it has been asked directly you what is a diamond problem or they will ask you why is you know multiple inheritance not allowed in java so let's try to understand it so suppose if i have a class a okay let's say this is my main class or the parent class and let's say it has a method called as print all right it has a method instead of print let's say it has a method display so it has a method display correct let's say there are two children of the parent class a so i can have that right? this is allowed and we just saw right here in our case it was animal and dog and cat and now what let's say b also has his version i mean you can do polymorphism right so b also has his own version of display similarly does c also has his own version of display okay now what you can do now i have a third class d okay what if i now this d wants to inherit from b and c correct what i am saying we're talking about the diamond problem diamond problem is the problem which happens when you do multiple inheritances multiple inheritance means as you can see here this is a class d this class has two parents what parent b is a parent and also c is a parent so so let's see what is the problem the problem actually which leads due to multiple inheritance is called diamond problem okay we're going to look at that so now d has two parents b and d now tell me now tell me because d is the child of b and c due to inherit according to the inheritance all the properties and all the methods of the parent class is available to d correct similarly this display method is available to d as same as even the c display method of c is also available to d now when you create an object of d okay let's say you create d obj equal to new you know d if you do this and if you say obj dot display which actually version it should be using should it be using the b's version or should it be using the c's version there is a confusion we do not know which one will be called or which one should be called and this is called as the diamond problem why diamond as you can see it actually looks like a diamond correct that's why it is called as the diamond problem so this diamond problem is what you run into if you allow multiple inheritance multiple inheritance means 
a class has more than one parent like here b class has two parent one is b and the other one is c and that is why in java we do not allow multiple inheritance you can have multi level what you can have you can have multi level multi level means as you can see here d is a a class its parent is b and b's parent is a you can have something like this but what you cannot have is multiple meaning a class cannot have more than one parent this is the thing of java so this is something you should remember and also a interview question okay so i hope this helps